What is up ladies and gentlemen, it is your boys Zether here and I am back at it again to drop what if Naruto trained like Saitama aka One Punch Man. Now this might as well just be called what if Naruto is broken and nobody can do anything to him because that's quite literally what would happen. Seeing as Saitama is a gag character who doesn't lose, like he can't lose, it, it literally cannot happen for the story to continue to work then that's literally what's going to be happening into the naruto verse now just imagine has the question ever been asked saitama versus naruto never because saitama would obliterate him with like a flick so it's kind of gonna be more of a gag funny story and it's not really going to be something that i go into too deep nothing that i really like take too many things into account honestly i'm kind of just going to be having a lot of fun with this story and you guys are just going to join me for the journey it's going to be an amazing story still i promise guys so you guys are still going to be enjoying the story that being said let's get right into the what if Okay, we start a story off the day that Naruto was born. Now, literally nothing about this is going to be changing at all. Naruto's birth and the Nine Seals attack is literally going to be going just as it does in canon, meaning Kushina dies, Minato dies, and half of the Nine Seals is, of course, going to be put inside of Naruto. Meaning that not only is he going to be One Punch Man, but he's also going to be having the Kurama Amp, which honestly, he's never going to really need. But um, I can't really get rid of the Nine Tails, and there's no really no reason that anything would change up to this point. So Naruto would still basically get the Nine Tails turn uh, put placed inside of himself. That being said, everything honestly remains the same up until the day that Naruto arrives at the academy, his very first day at the academy. Now, this is where the story officially starts. Of course, Naruto's childhood was the same, where everybody still bullied him, they treated him awfully, and you know, he honestly had to grow up with spoiled milk and blankets. Like I say in every one of my what-ifs, why? Like, just why, dude? This kid, it, it was a literal child that was left just to, to kind of die because of the fact that Hiruzen was so incompetent as a Hokage and just wasn't able to, you know, treat Naruto the way that he should have been treated. I guess that kind of makes up for, I guess that's kind of why Naruto doesn't know how to treat Boruto, because of the fact that, you know, when Hiruzen was Hokage, he neglected Naruto, so it's like, it's kind of the only thing that Naruto knows. I don't know, I'm getting off topic and I'm going on a tangent. Okay, let's get into the story for real. So, obviously, Naruto arrives on his first day through the academy. Now, Iruka sensei would basically end up telling all of them to go through and take this little written exam that would pretty much test their knowledge as a ninja, asking them very basic questions like what would you do in this situation type stuff. All of the students would answer the questions and hand the tests up to Iruka, to which Iruka would tell them all that, you know, they actually did pretty well on these questions. However, a couple of them were marked wrong and through the next couple of years, they will be learning all the answers to these questions. So not to worry if you got any of these wrong, by the time you graduate, he promises that all of them will know everything everything about being a ninja. Everybody would get pretty excited just being like, yeah, so uh, are we gonna play with Shuriken now? As Iruka would just start smiling and being like, yep, it's about that time. He would basically be like, all right, everybody meet me outside, as everybody would be pretty excited going outside. Now Sasuke would actually be pretty happy thinking that he's gonna get to show off all his training that he's done with his big brother Itachi. As you know, he goes over there and all the girls are like, oh my god, Sasuke, I'm so wet. You know, and Sasuke would just be over there just going like, huh. As you know, he's just cocky, smiling. You know, we don't have emo Sasuke right here. He's a happy kid, you know what I mean? And so Sasuke goes up and throws a shuriken, gets, getting some pretty good marks, you know, almost hitting all the targets, basically just thinking that he's all this and that. And afterwards, we would have Naruto who looks at Sasuke and just thinks, what a show off. He would basically just be thinking to himself that he wishes that he could have all this attention. Naruto would proceed to basically just look at the targets as he would throw the shuriken one by one one and he would actually miss almost all of them except for one which would actually hit barely like towards the middle of the target practice thing as naruto would kind of just smile thinking that he hit one but everybody would kind of just be focusing on what sasuke is doing next he would be run doing the running exam he would run across the field to see how long it takes him and aruka would be like wow that's pretty good stuff as aruka would end up telling you know everybody that you know the best one now is sasuke that hopefully throughout the years they will all get stronger and be able to reach a point where all of them can be equals 
Now, Aruka would just be thinking that, yeah, the Uchiha is definitely going to be getting ahead of everybody. And after this, he would say, all right, guys, so uh, why don't we get into some sparring? There will be random pairing decided on this popsicle. As Aruka, at this point, doesn't like Naruto because, you know, he's still immature and doesn't realize that Naruto is not at fault for his parents' death. So he would kind of just pair up Naruto versus Sasuke, prompting Sasuke to obliterate Naruto. This battle pretty much goes just as it does in canon, and Sasuke wipes the absolute floor with Naruto. After this, Naruto would get up having a bloody nose as he would say <laughs> he would just kind of sob with like a tear coming out of his eye and like a little little bit of snot coming out of his nose as every time he breathes that little bubble just comes out and he's like I'll never lose again as he would run off and the rest of the students in the academy would just begin to pray Sasuke. Naruto would go home and start punching his pillow just be like why does Sasuke be so much better than me what's so cool about him you know just punching at the air wondering why everybody likes him over you know himself why is sasuke so liked by everybody naruto would be jealous of that and this is when naruto would decide that he's going to be getting stronger no matter what as he would begin to work work towards a training a training um a training program basically being 100 push-ups 100 sit-ups 100 squats and a 10 kilometer run as naruto would begin to do this training and from the background we would hear a, a beautiful song by the words of a legend it would go something like this it's about work it's about power we stay hungry we no i'm totally kidding no <laughs> but seriously um naruto basically begins to do the one punch man training and so he basically would promise by a like a blood promise that he's never going to lose again that he's going to get stronger and so for the following year naruto would basically just proceed to break through his limits as we would have him do this every single day until eventually his legs start hurting eating a banana in the morning was easy for him because of the fact that that's all he had as an option and he basically did the exact same training that saitama did causing himself to break through every single limit that he had and so after the year was over by the end of the first year of the academy iruka would basically decide that they should all spar once again just to see where they're all at now iruka would of course end up pairing naruto and sasuke against each other to which naruto would actually end up standing inside of the circle and sasuke would create the little the little symbol and stuff like that sasuke's still a happy person since the uchiha massacre hasn't happened quite yet until let's say next year and you know he would perform a couple hand signs as he would jump back and say fire style fireball jutsu immediately naruto seeing this fireball coming at him would kind of panic as he wouldn't know what to do and he would quite literally blitz before he even knew what was happening right at sasuke now sasuke seeing this would have his eyes widen as naruto would realize what he just did and he would throw a punch straight at sasuke's jaw causing sasuke to get flung literally crashing into the academy having to be rushed over to the medical ninjas to be able to be healed because if he was he, he wasn't he was going to have some very permanent damage and so sasuke was taken to the nurses and stuff like that as everybody there would just be silent and it would all be broken by sakura who would yell at naruto saying how dare he hurt her sasuke kun there's no way he could beat her that was just a fluke and everybody would just be thinking yeah there's no way sasuke lost he's the best because at this point sasuke you know he talks to everybody everybody likes sasuke you know what i mean and Everybody's just kind of continuing to just be like, yeah, no way you beat Sasuke. But Naruto would have a big bright smile on his face just thinking that he did it. He achieved this goal. He broke through his limits. He's now stronger than Sasuke. Naruto would continue doing his training, the 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups every single day for the next months as that was the last day. And for the next three months, they would have three months off to train. Naruto would train on his taijutsu prowess, literally not even learning, not even bothering to learn chakra because, I mean, Naruto doesn't feel like he needs that. He kind of just wants to keep learning how to fight. Chakra will, you know, he'll learn that in the academy later on. And so, you know, Naruto continues breaking through his limits, deciding that, yeah, he's definitely never going to lose again. This is when the school year would start back up as Sasuke would look at Naruto and give him like a bit of a death glare. Naruto seeing this would ask Sasuke if he wants to have a, a, a spar once again. And Sasuke being the person that he is would just be like, yeah, I want to have a spar once again. Come on, Naruto. Naruto would look at Sasuke as he's, uh, excuse me, sorry about that as he would basically just be like all right well i guess we can spar immediately sasuke would have a grin appear on his face as he would say he doesn't know that i've been training with big bro itachi for this fight or my dad 
As you know, Naruto just stands in the circle, and Sasuke rushes at Naruto. Now, Naruto would rush at Naruto once more as he realizes that that amazing strength can now be controlled. Naruto would just start dodging all the blows that Sasuke's throwing as he pretty much is just watching them come at him in slow motion. Sasuke, seeing this, would get pretty triggered as, you know, I just got an idea. We should make Sasuke be somewhat like Speedo Sound Sonic, who always keeps trying to beat Naruto, but just will never be able to. That honestly just sounds like such a dope idea. Okay, yeah, we're definitely doing that. And so, of course, we would basically just have a, um, a Sasuke who essentially is just continuing to try to beat Naruto, but nothing at all that he does is able to get naruto to get any damage and naruto would literally flick the air in front of sasuke as sasuke would be blown back by a gigantic gust of wind which would cause sasuke to get knocked out and this is when everybody would kind of just realize that naruto is no joke and so after this Naruto would kind of be the alpha of the classroom where nobody who once proceeded to, you know, bully him or make fun of him would do that ever again. It would be kind of like, a, have you guys ever seen How to Train Your Dragon? Um, do you guys remember when Hiccup basically, he finally started learning how to fight against, the, how to, you know, train dragons and stuff. And he started, you know, basically conquering them. And slowly everybody started to basically get a bigger liking towards him. That's pretty much what happens in terms of Naruto's popularity. And so Naruto pretty much proceeds to be the alpha for about one year. And after that year, Naruto would get bored. Now he has no challenge. It's boring to him. But Naruto keeps his head up and, you know, thinks that, you know, once he fights ninjas out in the real world, he'll definitely get a challenge. Because as Iruka makes it seem, there's definitely hundreds if not thousands of ninjas out there who may be able to pose a challenge to Naruto. And once he graduates from the academy, he'll be able to fight against each and every single one of them. And Naruto's just happy about that. So by the time, by the midway of the second year, uh, Sasuke's family gets massacred. Sasuke unlocks the one Tomoe Sharingan because he's training even harder because Naruto's whooping his butt. So Sasuke is actually able to hone the one Tomoe Sharingan, just barely, just barely, only in moments of crisis. So like, let's say he's fighting and he knows he's about to lose. That's when Sasuke can activate it. But other than that, he really can't. Um, and we would basically just have him where he continues to, you know, basically just go through with things. Sasuke becomes emo. Naruto continues becoming popular. And so by the final day of the second year, Naruto would ask Iruka if he wants to spar with him. And Iruka would honestly say he sh sure. You know, he would tell Naruto that that's a great idea. As he would tell all the students to go outside and watch this, you know, spar session. Iruka thinking that it's about to be so easy, telling Naruto that he's going to hold back a bit. With Naruto just jumping up, back and forth with like a boxing stance just being like no nah, don't worry about it iruka go full throttle iruka would look at naruto as he's like is this kid insane he would create four shadow clones they would all rush at naruto and naruto would quite literally just stand there as out of nowhere a, like naruto would appear behind iruka as he punches him straight in the back but like literally stops stops halfway there as the wind pressure would send iruka and all four of his clones flying into a, a, a gust of bushes as you know they basically fall into them and iruka just stands back up as he's like what he looked towards naruto who's right there basically just waving hi to him as iruka rushes at naruto throwing a bunch of shuriken jumping into the air saying fire style fireball jutsu just blowing a giant gust of fireball right at naruto naruto would quite literally just stand there as he grabs each and every single one of the shuriken out of the air and throws them right back at iruka who narrowly dodges the ones that were gonna hit his vital points meaning a couple of them actually hit him and iruka would fall into the ground as blood just gushes out and naruto just stands there the people of the class would quite literally be silent as this is when the awkward silence is broke by a couple of naruto's fangirls because yup he has those now and ino just happens to be one of them she would be like you did great naruto Woo -woo! you know what i'm saying like they're all pretty excited and naruto just sitting there like i i even beat my instructor he gets a little saddened by that, but this is when the fangirls would come in and start basically praising Naruto, as Naruto would forget all of that, and we would basically just have Sasuke in the background thinking that he's gonna defeat Naruto one day, training harder and harder every day, thinking that Naruto's so fast, he needs to get just as fast as him. 
And so Sasuke would basically practice on his speed, his taijutsu prowess, trying to get faster and faster and faster to the point where someday he'll be able to defeat Naruto. And Sasuke at this point is actually pretty fast. What Sasuke is wanting is basically to be as fast as Speedo Sound Sonic. Or, you know, that's basically what Sasuke is aiming for, a speed which can match even that of Naruto's. Now, there's something that I still haven't answered yet. Is Naruto bald? And I'm guessing a couple of you guys are probably wondering if he is. Well, I'm about to answer that question. He is not bald. Now, a couple of you guys probably saw the little pause in the recording, and that's because I had to pause the video to check the poll that I just basically posted well not really a poll but more like a random community tab post so in case you guys aren't keeping up to date with my community tab i would recommend you do that seeing as that's the place where you guys can vote for you know small things in my what ifs such as the ship or you know whether naruto is hair or not stuff like that also getting to vote on the next what if and i know i know guys i said i would actually drop a frieza potential naruto but i got a really bad case of writer's block so instead of dropping that as a movie i think that frieza potential naruto will kind of just be a little bit of a one-shot series and it should be dropping sometime soon but i'm probably going to try to finish my uh uchiha naruto after this one then i'm gonna drop a deku one and then i'll probably be dropping my frieza's potential one seeing as i already have the thumbnail for it it's a pretty crispy one at that so i'm probably going to be dropping that idea very very soon that being said though this is when you know as i said he would proceed to just continue as he you know goes home and you know the final day of the second year is over and so after this we would basically just have naruto continue to do nothing for the following next year like for the following three months that they have office break naruto quite literally just proceeds to do small jobs and work with iruka or no not iruka but ichiraku he quite literally decides that during his like his summer off he's gonna work with uh ichiraku ramen and in exchange he gets one he gets like a pretty a pretty decent amount of you know money from you um ichiraku he also gets a one free bowl of ramen a day every time that he works and so naruto during the summer off that he has just kind of works with ichiraku during this time naruto gets a pretty cool bond with ichiraku realizing that he actually used to be on a team with his father now ichiraku actually should naruto find out i mean i don't really think he'll care if he does ichiraku would tell naruto that yeah he actually used to be on a team with minato his father and naruto would just be like yo that's pretty dope he would say you actually look a lot like him look like look a lot like the fourth hokage naruto hearing fourth hokage would just be like hold on now pause the fourth hokage is my dad iruka would no uh ichiraku would be like yeah you didn't know that as naruto would just be like no and he would be like the resemblance is uncanny kid it's pretty obvious as you know naruto would just be like huh ain't that something no wonder i'm so strong as you know ichiraku would just be like what was that naruto and he would say nothing the third year would begin as naruto was just so bored he would not train at all not even doing his 100 push-ups sit-ups or any of that stuff anymore kind of just laying at home and eating ramen all day meaning that he ended up getting a little chubby from his stomach during that one year that they were in the graduation and he started losing a couple of his fangirls seeing as some of them were like whoa naruto you got a little chubby didn't you naruto would kind of just be like eh whatever i don't care and he would kind of just have like a little bit of a thor thing happen where you remember when thor couldn't defeat thanos thanos not thanos but thanos and he ended up getting fat we would basically have naruto getting fat as well as essentially naruto just kind of continues going on until like the last three months of the academy where he decides all right getting about to be to that point i might as well get fit again as he begins to start his 100 push-ups sit-ups and squat thing and kilometer run once again and after the three months naruto gets absolutely shredded this man literally develops an eight pack and gets saitama's physique literally saitama's physique in that short of a time span also naruto's drip is of course going to be that saitama outfit that yellow like fit with the cape and all that stuff naruto has that made not only that but he has like the little headband thing but he doesn't wear it on his actually on his head he actually wears it on his like neck similar to what hinata does with it because naruto saw hinata wearing it like that one day and he thought that that was actually pretty cool so he started copying her and hinata and naruto don't really talk but naruto did save hinata as a kid so she does like naruto that being said though this is when he would essentially just get to the final day the day where they graduate from the academy 
Now, it's on this day where Naruto's kind of just sitting in the back, just pretty bored, just thinking that when are they finally going to graduate, thinking that it's been so long. As Iruka sensei would honestly just come in out of nowhere and be all like, oh, okay. So guys, you guys are all graduating, just, pre just perform a shadow clone. And Naruto not actually being able to perform a shadow clone would kind of just proceed to move so fast that he creates a speed mirage. And everybody in the class seeing this would be like, I mean, they would not be the wiser. Naruto would be sitting down as he would create the hand sign and as he creates the hand sign, he would use supersonic speed to pretty much create a after image of himself which stands there and does what Iruka thought he wanted him to do. So Naruto passes and then has to take the written exam which Mizuki ends up failing him for because Mizuki's a dog and you know Mizuki ends up getting folded by Naruto. I'm not covering the Mizuki stuff at all. Naruto realizes yeah like this kid is clearly lying and he folds Mizuki like a lawn chair, bringing him to Hoka to the uh, Lord Third. And Naruto at this point kind of just goes home after that, being excited to fight a bunch of cool people. You guys might be wondering, does Naruto ever learn the multi shadow clone jutsu? No. He doesn't even know how to use chakra yet. Like, he literally doesn't know the basics because Naruto stopped caring. He literally does not care about getting any stronger because Naruto's afraid that if he continues getting stronger, he's not going to find any worthy opponents. And Naruto, you are so right. You are so right. But, uh, yeah. This is when Naruto would basically just proceed to go to school the next day or the academy where they would all essentially meet their Jonin sensei, Kakashi. After a three hour wait, Kakashi finally walks in the classroom and Naruto, being petty, decides to pull the chalk prank on Kakashi. Kakashi, seeing that, would see Naruto laughing, Sas Sasuke looking serious, and Sakura just standing behind Sasuke. He's like, oh, another team of failures. All right. As he would look towards Naruto, just thinking that he expected the son of the fourth Hokage to have more of a, you know, to be better than this. But Kakashi would say, what can he expect? It's not like he was actually raised by him anyways. So Kakashi would basically proceed to grab all of them, telling them to meet him on the roof. And Naruto would just walk there, whistling as he has both of his hands behind his head. Now Sasuke would just be wondering why Naruto was so chillaxed all the time. Why he's so nonchalant about everything. And he would just be getting angry as he looks at Naruto. Because at this point, Sasuke's become jealous of Naruto's strength. Because Sasuke views strength as something necessary. He needs it in order to defeat Itachi. But at this point, Sasuke's first goal before Itachi is Naruto. Because if he can't even defeat him, then how does he expect to defeat his big brother? Now, Sasuke, Sasuke, Sasuke. You are insane. There's no way you're defeating Itachi. Absolutely. Like, it's not happening. I'm sorry. But, yeah. They all make Kakashi up on the roof. He, be, he basically just looks at them as he's like, all right, guys, introduce yourselves. What are your likes and dislikes? They would all basically be like, yo, uh, Kakashi, why don't you go first? As Kakashi's just like, my likes, none of your business. My dislikes, none of your business. And that's kind of just how it goes. After Naruto goes up there and says that he wants to be the Hokage to gain the respect of all and be a respected person, that someday he's going to save the entire world and become the strongest ever. As Kakashi's just like, oh, okay, pretty, you know, pretty reasonable goal for someone around his age. As he just looked towards Sasuke and he says his emo stuff, and Sakura is just like, um, uh, um, that little trash bag, that trash bag is just over there spewing nonsense. As you know, Kakashi just basically says, all right, look, meet me here tomorrow. You're gonna be having a little test to see if you will remain as Genin. And he's like, don't eat. Now, everybody would basically go home as Naruto proceeds to oversleep because he was working a night shift with Ichiraku. And when he wakes up, he barely arrives as he would see Kakashi, who's basically, uh, who basically arrives about 10 minutes later. And he would see Sasuke and Sakura just sitting under a tree sleeping. Naruto would kind of just lay there for about 10 minutes and Kakashi would finally arrive. Naruto would be laughing, thinking that he's so glad that he arrived late for once, as Kakashi would just basically tell them all to wake up. Now, Naruto would kind of just be sitting there like, yo, Sasuke, Sakura, get up. We have like our first mission or something like that. As Sasuke is just like, oh, good. As, you know, they all are just sitting there. Sasuke looks at the time and is like, you're three hours late. Why do you tell us to come here so early? As Kakashi is just like, sorry, I was lost on the path of life. Nobody would believe that. And afterwards, Kakashi would proceed to explain what the bell test is and what is about to go down. 
This is when Kakashi would just stand there and be like, all right, so look at these bells. I have two bells. The first two to get them from me win. As Kakashi just looks at the group and he says, so I'm going to count down. Uh, come at me with the intent to kill or you're not getting the bells. And everybody would kind of just be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Naruto would just be sitting there thinking, okay, so take the bells. Seems fun. As Kakashi would kind of just stand there and Naruto would look at Kakashi as he would say go. Immediately Sasuke and Sakura would go hide in the trees as Naruto kind of just stands there with a blank expression on his face and Kakashi just wondering why he's sitting there. Kakashi would basically throw a kunai at Naruto to which kunai to which Naruto would just leap at the kunai and chomp it breaking the kunai. As Kakashi is like yo what what? And in that moment, Naruto would rush at Kakashi using about 1% of his power as he throws a punch which sends Kakashi's book flying out of his hand and Kakashi crashing into a tree. Kakashi would immediately get back up as he rushes at Naruto creating a bunch of clones and jumps up into the air as his clones jump up with him and propel him over to Naruto, basically kicking him over to him. Naruto would be rushing at Kakashi as immediately Kakashi would take out a kunai and slash towards Naruto, to which Naruto would duck and basically throw an uppercut, but it would then re be revealed that Kakashi substituted one of his clones and it would poof into smoke. This is when Naruto would throw a back kick as he noticed this and the real Kakashi would be right behind him leading ready to throw a fireball the fireball would quite literally be deflected with nothing but the wind pressure and kakashi would then continue rushing at naruto as one clone would actually go to grab naruto's feet by using the headhunter jutsu but it would grab nothing as naruto jumps up into the air and throws an explosive tag right at kakashi Kakashi seeing this would basically reveal the, the Sharingan as he then rushes at Naruto and proceeds to essentially continue to try to fight him. Naruto and Kakashi would get into a Taijutsu bout, which Kakashi is losing in terms of power, but in terms of finesse and skill, he's able to just barely be able to keep up with Naruto with his Sharingan. And Naruto would feel alive, feel alive just for one second. He's able to feel something for once in his life as Naruto is just smiling and for a second Naruto lets his power go up to 2% as he throws a punch which Kakashi is unable to dodge and Kakashi is knocked out immediately waking up about 20 minutes later as Naruto standing over him just asking him if that's it. Kakashi would wake up as he would see Team 7 standing there and he would basically just see that the bells are basically in Naruto's hand. He would walk over to Sasuke and Sakura and just say that they can go on to become Chunin, I mean Genin, that he'll just go back to the academy, that it won't be a problem for him anyways, as you know he gives them to them and you know Kakashi seeing this would be like you pass. Explaining that ninjas that you know abandon the mission are scum but ninjas who abandon their friends, they're worse than scum. Naruto would take this lesson to heart and after this Naruto would be like yo hold on so you're a Jonin right Kakashi would be like yep as Kakashi's just sitting there like yeah I'm a Jonin and Naruto would just be like all right all right that's you know that's cool or whatever as he would then basically ask Kakashi uh you know if he was going all out Kakashi would just tell Naruto that he was and that he's impressed with his power how he got this strong Naruto would say that he just trained as you know Kakashi would just be thinking of Guy and how strong his you know basic taijutsu prowess is that not even Guy with like the fourth gate could have done that to him so this kid clearly is very powerful actually no nah, I think a fourth gate guy could have done that got have could have gotten that same result but uh yeah Naruto seeing this would just be like all right that's you know that's, that's pretty cool and Kakashi would kind of just be telling them all that all right so meet at this place tomorrow for our first mission this is what naruto right after this would basically have one question going through his mind if he was able to defeat a jonin he wonders where hiruzen stands he's heard so many stories and he finally was able to feel alive just for a second for a split second when he was fighting against kakashi so he wonders what would happen if he was to fight against the hokage could naruto finally have the chance to finally just for one second go all out now this question is going to be answered very very soon. So Naruto would begin to basically just walk over to the Hokage's monument as you know he would stand there and basically just sit up top there as he eats a bowl of ramen courtesy of Ichiraku as you know after he's done with the bowl he basically burps and is like all right as he taps his stomach and pats it just like all right let's go fight as you know he basically just jumps all the way over to heroes in his, uh, office as he breaks in straight through the roof with the ambu just immediately rushing naruto but naruto kind of just standing there as you know he sticks both hands out as he grabs the swords and throws them at the ground 
Dianbu would immediately stand down as Haruzen would realize that this is Naruto, and he would be like, whoa, Naruto, what are you doing here? Naruto would look at Hiruzen as he would ask Hiruzen to spar. And Hiruzen would basically be very, very annoyed with this paperwork as he's like, you know what, Naruto? Yeah, sure, let's spar. Naruto would be like, let's go, you know, just excited as Hiruzen just kind of has a pretty, a pretty decent smile on his face, thinking that Naruto was able to do that. He might actually get a little bit of a challenge when it comes to fighting Naruto. Now, this is when Hiruzen would step outside with Naruto to a like nice little area where Hiruzen would look at Naruto and be like, all right. So I want to get started. Naruto would immediately blitz at Hiruzen, who would get punched straight in the gut. Hiruzen would get flung away as he would get right back up, and Naruto would just be standing there wondering why he's not trying. Hiruzen would then summon Monkey King Enma as he would turn him into an adamantium staff and basically begin to spin it as he would just point it at Naruto and say, I'm ready. He would then rush at him as he would jump into the air and say, Fire style, fireball jutsu, followed by a water style, a wind style, a earth style. Uh, and basically a lightning style jutsu because he would have created five clones as well and basically shoot a bunch of elemental jutsus right at Naruto. Naruto, however, would basically be able to blitz right through them and tank all the attacks as he appears right in front of Hiruzen and he has a big bright smile on his face. He's actually able to use 3% of his power against Hiruzen as Hiruzen would just be thinking that Naruto's insane. He would punch Hiruzen, causing Hiruzen to ricochet off of the ground as he Hiruzen would have to substitute out of there before Naruto came down on the ground and created a deep crater. Naruto would then basically proceed to rush at Hiruzen as Hiruzen would then basically proceed to shoot uh, would proceed to basically coat himself with uh, the fourth Hokage's lightning cloak as he would rush at Naruto and you know obviously I think that Hiruzen can do this because it's said that he's mastered like all jutsus or whatever so I think it's pretty safe to assume he can do this so yeah we would basically have Hiruzen do this and afterwards he would rush at Naruto with Naruto cranking it up to about 4% however once he does this Hiruzen would throw his staff right at Naruto to which Naruto would use two fingers to deflect it and break the staff after this he would blitz at Haruzen who basically is just looking at Naruto and is basically stuck in time in the in the eyes of Naruto Naruto would quite literally blow on the back of Haruzen's neck causing shivers to go down him as he would then just chop the back of his neck and Haruzen would fall down to the ground literally eyes like pupils gone they would have like turned white and he would grab Haruzen's body as he would basically just put him in his office and Naruto would then just think that that was the legendary Hokage. He would immediately just be so bored as he's just like, wow, I'm really the strongest. As Naruto would instantly just get sad but then realize, wait, if I'm the strongest, that means I can become the Hokage at an early age. All I need to do is rise through the ranks and I can become a great Hokage, even better than Lord Third. As he would just be smiling and a creepy smile would just appear on Naruto's face. He would think that, yeah, it's finally about time that he gets back at Hiruzen for not taking care of him for all those years. As Naruto just smile, smiles and he's just like, I can't wait to go on these missions. This is when they would proceed to go on to, on to, um, on to three missions as at this point naruto's like nah not happening and after about three days of worthless missions naruto would just go up to Hiruzen and he's like yo i'm not doing this like give me a better mission or i'm gonna freak out now here's in knowing that naruto is even stronger than he is and you know kakashi's on the team they even have the prodigy of the uchiha clan sasuke and then they have the trash bag soccer on there he's just like you know what why not Take a C rank mission. This is when Tazuna would walk in there drunk and just be like, bleh, 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 bleh. he's just insane. Just, just being so weird, talking smack on Naruto's dumb looking face and telling Sakura that she doesn't even look like a ninja with that sparkly pink hair. Sakura would get pretty angry, being like, let me at him, let me at him, you know, just being insane, just like her, being like, cha, you know, and, you know, they would kind of just sit there as naruto just doesn't think too much about it he gets a little triggered but it's kind of like eh, whatever he kind of learned to take trash talk after all the years of being berated by the villagers and so sasuke would kind of just be standing there looking at how naruto was just treated by the hokage getting even more jealous wishing to be as strong as naruto and so we would essentially just have sasuke take the dark path because, I mean, Sasuke's pure jealousy is kind of just going to lead him down that path. At this point, Sasuke 
is even more focused with destroying Naruto than he is with taking down Itachi. Because he just is that obsessed with Naruto and his strength. And so we would essentially just have Naruto meeting everybody the very next day um as they kind of just proceed to go on the mission and about 30 minutes into it of course they all notice a puddle on the ground which would be very very obvious because of the simple fact that i mean it's a pretty plain genjutsu even sasuke realized it so when the two demon brothers come out naruto using his sensory abilities would kind of just realize this and before uh kakashi could even get destroyed or sasuke can react naruto would blitz at both of them basically causing both of them to hit their heads he would grab each and every single one of them by the collar and smash their heads into each other as they both get knocked out interrogated by kakashi and then uh, sealed into scrolls after he puts them on t-shirts and by that i mean rest in peace as um yeah no after this we would essentially just have naruto go on to you know continue with the mission about four hours into it they would be very very close to the land of the waves as this is when a thick mist would arrive now of course a gigantic blade would come in out of nowhere as kakashi would look at everybody just telling them all to duck naruto would stand there as he looks at the blade coming right at him and grabs it with one hand as he breaks it in half and zabuza gets angry he rushes at naruto but kakashi would throw a kick which would send zabuza flying away and after this zabuza would just basically be thinking kakashi of the of the leaf village as you know they have their introductions and their fights and after this kakashi pretty much gets trapped because kakashi always gets trapped he's too overconfident honestly if naruto and sasuke weren't there kakashi could have died there that's that's really tragic when you think about it killed by zabuza not even naruto dude come on now anyways so after this we would basically just have naruto standing there just being like all right i guess i'll have to step in this won't even be fun as he would kind of just look over to zabuza and zabuza would look at naruto as he's like what are you doing kid as naruto just looks at him with that plain expression on his face and haku would be watching from the bushes as naruto blitzes at zabuza at a speed that not even haku could perceive as naruto would quite literally grab zabuza's arm that's holding you know uh, kakashi in place and he would throw throw him into the air as haku seeing this would immediately rush at naruto as naruto would jump into the air before haku could do a thing and naruto would proceed to just kind of smile at zabuza as the last thing that zabuza would see is a punch coming straight at him naruto would throw a punch straight at his stomach which would cause zabuza's entire body to splatter in the air and naruto would then rush back to the ground as he falls down and lands looking at his fist which is covered with steam haku would look at him as he would say you you killed you killed zabuza he would explode into a rage as naruto would simply look at haku with a blank expression as he throws a bunch of senbon at naruto which naruto catches with one hand and naruto would then flick them all back at, at um at haku as he dodges them all and this is when haku would rush it at naruto as he would try to kill him but before he can do a thing naruto would just say um he would just say normal punches as he just starts throwing a bunch of normal punches straight at haku and he destroys haku in an instant after this naruto would just grab kakashi as he tosses him onto his shoulders and sasuke just literally falls down onto the ground thinking he's so strong may even be stronger than itachi as he's like no way itachi wiped out my whole clan and they're too powerful to be taken out by anybody even even naruto wouldn't be able to do that as you know he's kind of just denying the fact that naruto's even stronger than his brother at this point and so they would end up going to the land of the waves where sasuke would just train like an absolute mad lad trying to get faster and faster and stronger training on his taijutsu his fire styles and this would just prompt sasuke to get even stronger with the sharingan faster as he would eventually advance into the two tomoe state in both eyes this is when they would basically continue and by the time that they're almost done with the bridge gato's men would finally arrive on the bridge now naruto basically being like okay this is the guy so tazuna would look at naruto he's like he's like yeah that's that's the guy naruto would throw a punch as the wind the wind pressure in and of itself would cause all of them to get thrown into the waters and everyone would drown literally everyone including gato all the men none of them got away and so after this 
Naruto kind of just looks at Tazuna as he's like, all right, so we're, we're done here, right? As Tazuna just tells him, wait, they're going to name the bridge the Great Naruto Bridge. As Kakashi at this point finally wakes up and he's ready to leave. So, you know, he didn't even get to teach any of them water walking or, you know, tree walking. And so he would basically try to train them in this on their way back. However, when they arrive, they would arrive to a pretty decent scene. Naruto would turn the corner trying to go to Ichiraku Ramen Shop as he would see Konkuro picking up Konohamaru telling him, You got some kind of death wish, kid? Naruto seeing this would immediately blitz over there, grab Konohamaru and being like, You okay? As Konohamaru just nods his head and he's like, Yeah, that guy was really mean. As Naruto would just nod and be like, oh, don't worry about him, I already handled him. As in that instant that he grabbed Konohamaru, he literally flicked Konkuro's stomach, causing Konkuro to get flung into a wall, and it feels as if he just got hit by a, by like a powerful, powerful blow. Konkuro was out cold, and neither Gara nor Tamari was able to sense what happened. Konohamaru just disappeared, and after this... We basically just have Naruto returning to Team 7. He would take a couple of days to pretty much take a break, and this is when Kakashi would come up to all of them, telling them that, you know, the Chunin exams is coming up pretty soon. Naruto hearing this would be like, oh yeah, I get to become a Chunin? As, you know, we would basically just have Hiruzen call Naruto into his office and tell him, yo, you're a Jonin. As Naruto's just like, what? Because Kakashi explained what happened on the mission, and after hearing that, Hiruzen just say, like, yeah. You're Jonin. I mean, you're already stronger than me. Kakashi hearing this would be like, what? As you know, he's just like, yeah, the other day I sparred with him and he put me down in a couple seconds flat. As Kakashi literally just sitting there being like, yo, ain't no way this kid is able to do that to the Hokage. This guy is literally known as God of Shinobi. As you know, we basically just have Naruto be like, let's go. He's just like, so can I become a Hokage now? And Hiruzen just looks at Naruto as he says that he has the power, but not the wisdom as who are you to talk bro like who are you to talk here and like you are the worst hokage in all of history i'm convinced that if he, minato didn't die that day the the hidden leaf village would be such a better place than what it is in your care in your capable hands you know what i mean so you're nobody to talk here but that's pretty much what would happen naruto would get pretty upset but we're kind of just going to time skip to the day where all of his teammates end up taking the tune in exams now, that being said, all of his teammates would kind of just be ready to go over and take the tuning exams, and this is when all of them would pretty much just be walking over there. Naruto would enter the building as, well, this is when they're walking in there, you know, they're having a pretty good time. Again, Jutsu gets placed on them, which, you know, Sas Sasuke is able to break out of and break, you know, everybody else out of, but Naruto, because he already was out of it pretty easily. That Genjutsu didn't even affect him. It would have to take something on the, on like the Itachi tier of Genjutsu to be able to affect him even a bit and so we would basically just have him like just walking in there on the way in there they would run into a certain team of people being neji ten ten and rock lee and rock lee would rush over to naruto as he would ask him to fight him naruto seeing those like those excited eyes would be like sure why not as lee would be like let's go as he would say i have the perfect place he would basically end up telling naruto this way as you know they would end up rushing over there naruto would do the classic naruto run that way and lee and naruto would just stare each other down this is when naruto would blitz at lee as you know lee basically blitzed at naruto and naruto would kind of just throw a um a pretty big punch using literally one percent of his power um and hit lee setting him flying into a wall now lee's body would ricochet off of it and neji using his byakugan would be like what as he wasn't even able to see naruto's movements lee would fall onto the ground as naruto just stands over him and put puts his hand in, in lee's face saying good match Lee would look at Naruto's hand as his eyes are widened and his view is so blurry because at this point he's startled because of the punch. And he would stand up slowly in about 20 seconds as he would say, How? How are you this strong? What do you do? As Naruto would say, Oh, what do I do? He would look at Lee as he would say, No one's ever asked him that. As Lee would just look at him and Naruto seeing that look in his eyes of just wanting to get powerful would look at Lee as he would say, you know what, you actually show a little bit of potential, I'll tell you. As everybody would just listen in, Neji, Sasuke, Sasuke the most, as Naruto would look at him and say, Alright, so what you're going to want to do is 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 
100 squats and a 10 kilometer run as Rock Lee would just be looking at him. The room would go silent as Naruto would be like, what's going on? And Lee would look at Naruto as he looks down at the ground and says, why do you joke with me? That's what I do every day. That is my warm up. And I did not get these results. As Naruto would be like, what? Lee would just explain to Naruto that that's literally what he warms up with. Like, he does that every day and more. And Naruto would just be like, no way, bro. Like, that's the hardest thing I could think of. And Lee would just be like, that's basic training. Neji would be like, dude, I did that when I was like three years old. Like, what are you talking about? And Naruto would just be like, no way. Like, what, what are y'all talking about? Immediately, Guy Sensei would arrive as he's just like, all right, let's get to your places. As Naruto was kind of just left, left there wondering, what? Sasuke would look at Naruto as he would just have like an anime vein pop him out of his head. As he would be like, don't you ever scare me like that. I thought you were about to tell somebody your secret. He would look at Naruto as he would say, so what is it? As Naruto would say that that's it. And Sasuke would look at Naruto as he would ball his fist up and punch Naruto square across the face. He would say, why are you lying? There's no way anybody can fight you anyways. You're already a Jonin. As you know, this is when Guy would hear that and just continue walking away. As Sasuke would just be like, why do you lie about this? There's no way anybody could have gotten that strong by doing basic training. As Naruto just looks at him saying, that's really what I did. This would lead to an extremely funny moment, which Sakura would break the tension by just laughing. And she would just be like, that's so funny, Naruto. This is when Sasuke would just look at Sakura and he would kind of just stop punching Naruto. As Naruto would just be standing there and just be confused, wondering why everybody claims that his training isn't that hard. This is when Sasuke and Sakura would end up going into the exam, as Naruto just says, good luck. As Sasuke just says, I won't need it, you loser. As he would walk on in there, and Sakura and Sasuke would basically be able to go through the exam portion up until they get to the forest, where Sasuke gets bitten on the neck by that perv. And, you know, let's just say that uh, Ibusu's team or whatever doesn't end up attacking them. So they end up surviving, Sakura is able to save Sasuke, and they end up making it to the tower where Sasuke gets the curse mark sealed within him by Kakashi with the willpower seal and all that stuff. Because why not, you know? And so after this, Naruto is basically going to kind of just be waiting as, you know, they have the preliminaries, which Naruto is going to be in the stands to watch, because why not? And he would actually see Rock Lee fight with fourth gate open, Naruto thinking that that kid would be such a great training partner. You know, Naruto would actually be able to use a, a pretty decent amount of effort in and learn a couple of moves. So he watched Ty, uh, Rock Lee's moves and he would actually end up taking a couple of his moves into his own arsenal. Seeing as Naruto was a bunch of power, but not really that much. Uh, finesse when it comes to his fighting style and so he takes a couple of moves from Rock Lee's books you meaning like the leaf hurricane and all that stuff and the lion's barrage and all that crazy stuff and it's honestly pretty cool and so they would after this have the one month training arc Naruto seeing Gara was about to destroy Rock Lee's leg would interfere and block the attack saying that Rock Lee loses that there's no need to hurt him any further. So Rock Lee's like arms and stuff don't get destroyed. And Gara and Rock Lee's match ends prematurely. Now, Hiruzen usually would uh, kind of say something, but it's Naruto, bro. Like, there's not a thing he could do to him. And so, Naruto then has one month to basically train, or quote-unquote train, because that's not what he's going to do. Naruto, after about one week into the training, would decide that he's earned a hot spring bath, as he hasn't really earned it, because he goes there at least once a week. But he just kind of pats himself and goes to a cookie store where he buys some sweets and goes to the saunas, you know what I mean? That is where he basically has a towel around his waist and just sees Jiraiya, some old man on a turtle peeking over the girl's like area. As Naruto looks at him, he's like, what are you doing? Jiraiya turns around and says, oh, um, uh, I was doing research. As Naruto says, get out of here, you pervert. Jiraiya is just like, who do you, you don't know who I am, do you? And he's like, I'll lecture you. He does his, I'm the legendary Sonin, Jiraiya. As Naruto just stands there and he's like, not impressed, dude. You gotta go. Jiraiya would look at Naruto as he falls over and he's like, what do you mean you don't know who I am? What are you talking about? Naruto would say, your name doesn't carry any weight. Get lost. As he's like, unless you want to get punched. Jiraiya would then look at Naruto as he's like, wait, what's your name, kid? Naruto would look at him as he would say, the name's Naruto, now get out of here. Jiraiya would then say, ah, I used to train your father. As Naruto then listens, he's like, my father, what are you talking about? 
And Jiraiya would then basically just be like, yeah, old man Haruzen told me about that. That you already knew who your dad was and all that stuff. Naruto hearing this would just be a little intrigued as he would wonder what's what, what he's getting at. And Jiraiya would then tell Naruto that he's offering to train him. Naruto would immediately decline just being like, yeah, he doesn't really need that. That if he were to get any stronger, it would be so unfair. As Jiraiya is just kind of like, yeah, I heard you defeated the Hokage, but he's an old man at this point. There's no way he can do anything. And he would just look at Naruto as he would say, how about this? If you can, if I can land at least one hit on you, then you win. No, actually, how about this? He would look at Naruto, not believing the stories, thinking that it was just a little bit of cap. And he would just say, how about this? If you can beat me in a battle, then I'll agree to not train you. I'll leave you alone. As Naruto just say, all right, sure. They would go to a wide area, very far from the village. As Jiraiya just thinks that, you know, he might as well take some caution against this kid. Hiruzen said that he tried pretty hard, so he would immediately activate Sage Mode using Ma and Pato to get on his shoulders. As, of course, we would then basically just have Jiraiya sitting there. As Naruto seeing this would be like, yo, that's actually pretty OP. And Naruto would quite literally just begin to battle by rushing at Jiraiya. As Jiraiya would rush at Naruto, throwing a bunch of attacks, a bunch of taijutsu blows, and all this crazy stuff. But Naruto kind of just dodges and gets out of the way of every single blow. Naruto doesn't even throw a single punch until the very end. And we would have a scene so similar to the one where One Punch Man fights against Genos, throwing the punch that obliterates the mountain behind them. That's literally what Naruto does. He would basically proceed to have Jiraiya wear himself out. And once Jiraiya is ready to throw his final, like, biggest attack, Naruto basically just stands there as he lets it hit him and doesn't even move. There's literally not a scratch on him. And, you know, he gets hit with a big Rasengan straight to the face. But Naruto doesn't take any damage and quite literally stands there as he just says, all right, it's my turn. Jiraiya would stand there just wondering what he's going to do and just thinking of how he's going to stop the attack. As Naruto would look at Jiraiya, who's thinking millions of thoughts per second, but as Jiraiya is thinking of ways to stop him in an instant naruto would quite literally blitz over to him as he would throw a punch and stop it midway towards jiraiya's face as the wind pressure would destroy four mountains behind him and jiraiya would turn around as when he when he sees the four mountains that were destroyed so much sweat would begin to drip down his face as naruto looks at jiraiya taps him on the face and is just like i won as he's like all right so uh take me to get some ramen as jiraiya's like what as he's like that wasn't part of the deal as naruto's like now it is as jiraiya is just like uh okay as they basically end up talking and jiraiya just asked naruto how he's this strong as they basically just proceed to kind of get acquainted with each other getting to know one another naruto would say that the old man is actually kind of strong and over the one month literally nothing happens after this, though, we would, of course, have Sasuke return from his training with, with um, Kakashi, who, tr who teaches him the ch Chidori. And Sasuke actually comes back with a full mastery over the three Tomoe Sharingan, being extremely fast and also learning some Kenjutsu, which, if you don't know, Kenjutsu is basically just swordsmanship because Speedo Sound Sonic uses a sword and Sasuke kind of looks like him. We're kind of just going with that route for him. Now, Sasuke would arrive back into the village as he gets ready to fight against Gara. Now, that fight literally goes the same because Sasuke is not able to pierce the perfect defense that Gara has with nothing but his sword. So he ends up having to rely on the Chidori, which causes Gara to bleed and therefore he ends up leaving the village. That being said, Tamari and Conqueror would go with Gara because if nobody's there to basically stop, stop him, he's going to freak out and destroy everything. And so they would basically go over there to try to stop him. And Naruto seeing this would just see Sasuke rushing over there trying to finish his battle as the Genjutsu is placed. And Naruto in an instant quite literally blitzes at all of the attacking village uh, shinobis who aren't part of the leaf village and taking them all out. As he would then blitz over to Sasuke running right beside him as Sasuke would tell Naruto that this is his battle. Sasuke would rush over there as Naruto would say, fine, it's your battle. He would take out Tamari and Konkuro who try to stall them and he would let Sasuke face Gara, who ends up wiping the floor with Sasuke. 
it's more of an even battle but by the end of it when shukaku continues taking more and more control over over gara and he transforms into the full shukaku state sasuke has zero hope of winning this battle and so once it gets to that point naruto is kind of just sitting there like all right i'll take it from here and sasuke sticks his hand out and places his blade on naruto's throat telling him not to step in naruto just looks down as he sighs and and like kind of hits the back of sasuke's neck just telling him that he didn't want to have to do that but he's gonna do what he has to do for the sake of the village and so we would essentially just have naruto going over and standing there as he looks up at, Ga at gara or shukaku as he says "Ooh, you're the nine tails jinturiki huh as you know naruto just looks at shukaku and he's like yeah but i don't need kurama as shukaku's just like kurama how do you know his as you know we basically just have kurama finally revealing himself within naruto asking naruto to please give him a good punch as you guys are probably wondering yo when did naruto meet kurama well um do you know how naruto has to be a certain amount of strength in order to tame kurama he's way beyond that so he's already tamed kurama and realized what his name is so yeah naruto would just look at shukaku as he blitzes at him and throws a punch which just has all the sand of the body of shukaku get crushed as it crumbles in a sort of sandman fashion and he then flicks gara's head causing gara to be woken up naruto would hold him over as he would just basically use his takno jutsu even more powerful than his punches as he would proceed to basically defeat gara after this he would tell gara to watch over to sasuke as he returns and he would blitz over towards where the battle between Hoka the Hokage and Orochimaru is going down. Where Naruto would arrive there and just see like this 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 barrier between himself and the third and Lord Third. Naruto seeing this would be like, yeah, if anybody's going to be taking out Lord Third, it's gonna be me. As he would destroy it with one single punch, causing the barrier to shatter, and all of the ninjas that were around trying to get to Hiruzen would basically rush at the sound four as they would get hand Handled, and they would basically just be fighting against the Jonin. Naruto seeing Orochimaru fighting the Hokage would blitz at the first and second Hokage as he would punch them, leaving an opening for Lord Third to pretty much seal them both. As it's at this point that he basically just lands and he's like, ah, all right, let's make this quick. I'm gonna go watch some anime, read some manga. As he just stretches a little bit, you know. He cracks his neck, cracks his knuckles, and looks at Orochimaru. As Orochimaru just looks at Naruto and says, who's this brat? As he would say, how dare you impede on my battle with Hiruzen. But Hiruzen would kind of just be smirking, thinking that, yeah, now there's no way here. Oh, um, uh, what's it called? Orochimaru's gonna win in hell as he basically just proceeds to look at Orochimaru as he's like all right I'm gonna take it easy on you and he would blitz at Ob uh, Orochimaru as he punches him straight into the sky and you know o Orochimaru would proceed to say don't take me as a joke as he recurgitates himself and uses the Kusanagi blade to slash at Naruto which Naruto would break with his arm basically using his forearm to hit against a katana breaking it and he would then basically land back onto the ground as they're having an aerial battle where you know Orochimaru's putting all of his effort every single drop of his power into trying to defeat Naruto Naruto once they land back on the ground once more would kick Orochimaru by the jaw similar to an uppercut sending Orochimaru flying into the air spinning in circles as Orochimaru would get to the sky and if you guys have ever played um Mortal Kombat and you've seen Actually, no, nah, not even that. Do you guys remember Lord Boros when he got destroyed by that one punch that cleared the sky and literally made it so that the sky was clear, no clouds? That's literally what Naruto proceeds to do. He punches Orochimaru saying, serious series. Nor a uh, serious punch as he throws the blow right at Orochimaru, obliterating every fiber of his being. Meaning Orochimaru, he's not coming back. And the village is pretty much saved other than a couple of destruction and a little bit of a uh, couple of deaths meaning like six people died who you know were ninjas after that there was pretty much no need to call Tsunade. the village gets reconstructed and about two and about two weeks later two people arrive at the village with cloaks these two ninjas would be itachi and kisame now this is when the reconstruction of the village would pretty much just be almost over as Naruto would pretty much just be acknowledged by the people because he pretty much ended up saving them from Orochimaru in the attack. And uh, Hiruzen would pretty much just make a new rule that nobody can mess with Naruto anymore. 
Naruto would be pretty happy, but he hasn't quite yet earned the respect of all the people. Nothing similar to the pain arc has happened quite yet. And this is when Itachi and Kisa may arrive. Now the battle with Kakashi, Guy, and all those other people would happen on their search for Naruto, but when Naruto kind of gets wind of the fact that there's some battles going on, Naruto would go to the scene and immediately let it known that he's going to be taking them out. Now Naruto seeing all those other Jonin being taken out would immediately just say, ah, why do I always have to do this stuff? He would look at Akisame as he would just say serious series and kind of just kind of just be like whatever as he would say serious series serious punch he would throw a punch at kisame as he would obliterate every fiber of his being literally nothing would be left nothing but a pulp of blood as itachi seeing this would have both of his eyes widened as naruto would then go over to punch itachi as he would say normal punch punching itachi causing itachi's stomach to in like literally go into itself and itachi would just get like literally hit in half as Itachi's whole body would just kind of drop down to the ground and we would then just see Sasuke rushing in as he would say Itachi but he would then see Naruto quite literally just punch them in half and just be like you you, you killed him my my one reason to live as he would then rush at Naruto and throw the Chidori right at him Naruto would sidestep him as he would grab the Chidori right in Sasuke's hand and chop the back of his neck Sasuke would wake up in a hospital a couple of hours later and decide that he's gonna kill Naruto. He took the only reason to live for himself. He wanted to destroy Itachi. That was for him to do, not for him, not for Naruto to accomplish. As you know, Naruto would just remain in the village as he kind of just is acknowledged by more and more people little by little. Naruto would just stay there as as soon as Sasuke is healed, he grabs some things from his home and leaves the village for a training arc. Three years of training to be exact. And when he returns, he has speed comparable to that of like KCM, Naruto, Baryon. Actually, no, that's too insane. He would have ended up taking Itachi's eyes and gotten them uh, put into himself by a medical ninja, which was pretty good. And he has the um, Eternal Mangeki Sharingan because why not? So, yeah. And, uh, you know, he comes back. But before any of that stuff can happen, we got to establish one thing. Naruto, uh, he's kind of the big dog. And when it comes to the Akatsuki, they of course end up finding out that Naruto killed one of the strongest Akatsuki members. So literally all of the Akatsuki members would be sent out about one month after that happened. And the rest of the Akatsuki would basically have an attack on the village. Which Naruto would promptly stop. Because Naruto just destroys all of them. He obliterates them. He literally folds them like an omelet, like a launcher, however you guys want to put it. So every member of the Ikatsuki, with the exception of Obito, is pretty much put on a t-shirt. And uh, I have to do this for them. Rest in peace! As all of them are dead. Like, Sasori, Daedara, uh, literally all of them. They, they all died. They stood zero chances against Naruto. Except for Obito because he was a little hard to counter so it took Naruto a little longer to get adjusted to Obito's move of phasing through movements. But Naruto after fighting against Obito for a straight day and a half basically decided that alright Obito's kind of getting boring. He felt alive for a second but it's about that time. And when he fought against the Akatsuki Naruto felt great. He felt alive. The battle was a great one, but it was not, not really at the same time. Because Naruto wasn't really trying at all. When it comes to Pain's almighty push, Naruto could let, 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 quite literally withstand it. So the push and pull didn't do anything to him, and he destroyed the prey to paths. And just obliterated Nagato after destroying the rest of the Akatsuki. The poison and all that other stuff doesn't work. Hidan's immortality was grut, pretty much brushed off because Naruto punched Hidan's head into space. And... When it comes to sorcery, he just destroyed the puppet and broke him. Daedara's explosions and art is an explosion wouldn't work. And when Naruto kind of sensed that Daedara was going to use very dangerous splash attack damage moves, Naruto took him out very promptly. A good portion of the village was destroyed, however, because it's the Akatsuki, you know what I mean? They are pretty powerful. So, you know, that did happen. But, you know, the attack in and of itself, pretty plain. And so, three years later, 
Naruto would basically just be chilling at his house when Sasuke would arrive and he would slash at Naruto as Naruto would basically bite the sword. But Sasuke would come in with an extra one and jump into the air as he would kick Naruto straight out of his house. Naruto would get angry saying that, yo, who are you? As he would look at the eyes, the red eyes, similar to Sasuke's as he would just say, Sasuke? And Sasuke would just lunge at Naruto as he's in the air and Naruto would hold his fist up as Sasuke's balls would just come in and get hit by Naruto's fist as Sasuke would drop down to the ground and begin crying. And be like, Aah! You know, you would just hear a dog going arr, 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 as you know, Sasuke just on the ground and Naruto's like, oh my god, Sasuke, bro, my bad. Like, I haven't seen you in three years. I, I forgot what you looked like. As he's like, that was totally my bad. And, you know, we would just basically have Sasuke on the ground just be like, oh, I hurt. And, you know, the uh, Otsutsuki members arrive, but they get destroyed promptly. So, yeah, that is pretty much where what if Naruto trained like Saitama or One Punch Man is going to be ending. I hope you guys enjoyed the scenario. I hope it was a lot of fun to see an extremely overpowered Naruto in the verse of, well, Naruto. And if you guys enjoyed the story, then consider leaving a like and smashing that like button. Literally, serious series, tap that like button, all right? Do me that favor, as well as consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet. I mean, if you watch the videos every day, you leave a like, you comment, you might as well subscribe. Or if you watch my videos every day, then come on now, consider doing it. It'd, it'd help out a lot. I'm trying to get to 30k pretty soon and catch up to my boy Zukage, so it, it, it would help out a little bit. That being said, though, guys, I love each and every single one of you guys. I hope you guys had an amazing time listening to this What If, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next What If.